We hopefully can share some things with you today that you um, can learn from and, and grow your ministry in your local church. And our seminar today is called Bridging the Gap. So I wanted to start out by kind of getting a feel from you on what you feel is the gap. Where, who is on that other side of the gap? And what, what is that gap? Does anybody have anything that they um, can share with us, thoughts, ideas? Um, some of the things that we've noticed are in our ministry. Go ahead on to the next one. Um, our communication leaders in our conference, um, I don't know if it's the same here, but a lot of times a communication leader is voted in and then they go, what am I supposed to be doing exactly? And so we have figured out that um, a lot of the seminars that we do with the continuing education idea is, uh, is not working. So we've had to kind of back up and start with basics and sort of teach people what a communication leader does. Um, some of the other things that we've noticed in our ministry um, is that our members are becoming more difficult to engage. Are you guys experiencing that? Yeah. A lot of people are, what, busy? I'm busy. You guys are busy. Um, we have kids. We have work. We have uh, a lot of stuff going on in our lives. And honestly, we get barraged constantly from the outside world for their, they want our attention as well. So as church communicators, we're really struggling to try to figure out how to break through that wall, that barrier of apathy, and try to figure out how to engage people and get them to want, <laughs> there's the holy grail, to get them to want to get your information and to get to engage with what you're trying to, to get them in, involved in. So that's uh, one of the biggest things we're gonna talk about today. I feel like that's our biggest struggle as communicators. And then also, um, moving on. Um, well, they did a study with Barna um, for about 15 years and they have not done it for the last five years because the uh, statistic never changed. And so they haven't redone this study, but it's, how far is denominational communication behind the trend of corporate America communication? And we're about five years behind the trend. And so that, that to day. me is a huge gap <laughs> that we're desperately trying to close that in our conference by some of the stuff that we'll be sharing with you as we continue. Um, and then also because we're, we are so behind the trend, our young people are used to staying on top of it. They're, they're right there with whatever's the greatest, newest thing, exciting out there. And so church communication is we're like, not. Ah, not interesting. And because we're not engaging with them well, and because of you know other issues in the church, a lot of our young people are either not engaged in church, not coming at all, or they're just on the verge of slipping away. So we noticed that in our conference, big time, and I'm sure it's the same here. And so we decided to do something about that. And we'll share about um, what we did in a big way. We changed a lot of things, um, but we'll share that in our part two, part two of this um, presentation today. So we kind of wanted to start out with the basics. Um, for any of you that are not experienced communication professionals, we're not going to um, we're not going to dig too deep into the what we do as communicators, but we kind of wanted to approach it in the bridging the gap way. So we're going to talk about what you're supposed to be doing as a church communicator, but kind of keep that theme of what can we do that's new and innovative to do the things that we're supposed to do as communicators. So we'll start out with um, your job is to keep your church members informed of what's going on in your church. Right? So, all right. Um, a Christian uh, church communicator, Kim Myers, she wrote a book. This is the first edition. She's changed the title in the next one, but this is called Less Clutter, Less Noise Beyond Bulletins, Brochures, and Bake Sales. And uh, she was a um, Wall Street PR rep, and she left that to go to uh, church communication. 
And she uses this analogy of the potato chip aisle that I really liked. She had heard of uh, this author, Gail McDonald, who was speaking of a friend who had gone overseas as a missionary. And when she returned home after four years, she asked her friend, what's changed most in America since you've been gone? And it wasn't technology, it wasn't healthcare, it wasn't architecture. Her friend said the potato chip aisle changed. It went from having a few options to being bombarded by hundreds of options. And Kim draws that analogy into our kind of band-aid for church communication. We think, okay, we're not hitting the mark, so let's just throw a bunch of darts out there and try to hit every, as many people as we can hit. And we're not being effective that way. We're, we're giving them way too many options uh, with, with that. Well, and I'll, the world is giving them a lot the of options too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so. so. Connecting with our members. So that's, like I said before, that's our biggest, um, our biggest issue is finding a way to break through to the, all the noise, all the potato chips, all the options, and uh, try to get their attention, try to get them to want to be involved. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do today is talk about what we are doing already. So this is a list of things that we traditionally do in our churches to connect with our members. <clears throat> so are any of these things, do you look, look at this list and tell me, are any of these things currently working for your church? And I would love to know if they are because um, that's part of what I need to know as a communication director is what, what things are currently working that we need to keep? What, uh, is, does anybody see anything on this list that you feel is an effective way to reach out to your members? And it can be. These are not just all old antiquated ideas. Some of these are, are some of them very, are. some of them are, yes. Yeah. But anything strike you that might be effective in your church or anything? Yes. Phone chain works in your church? Yeah. Um, we actually have been looking into a new uh, way of communicating through the conference with phone chains because people do tend to answer their phones better than they do um, looking at their bulletins or whatever. So yes, definitely phone chains. Yes, Grant? Just a quick question. What is the purpose of all of this? Like, is it to like, just give announcements? This is to inform the church members of what's going on in your local church, what's going on in the conference, and what's going on in the church at large. Oftentimes we get boxes at the office that we then have to ship out of bulletin inserts to the local churches, or we design bulletin inserts of the local churches, or for the local churches based on conference events. And uh, we found that that one for us is not as effective as PowerPoint slides being sent out to the churches, letting them know. Of, um, mm -hmm. um, we have a conference app now, and so we push out information through the conference app. And so there are some of the stuff that we've already started attacking that one thing that we do at the end of each year is we sit down and we look at what we've done that year and has it been effective or not effective? And if it hasn't, let's figure out a way to change that. And so that's some of what we're sharing with you here are what we've sat down and evaluated for us. Well, what I'm, I'm gathering from you is you're trying to say that these some of these things do different things, basically, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Some of them will reach out to um, people who are in the church. Other people will reach out to people. Other things will reach out to those that are shut-ins. Other things mm -hmm. will reach out to people who um, might not... Um, you know, be be nominally there, and they might get the emails or the direct mail, but they're not going to get a bulletin. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, these are different ways that we communicate with our members, but this is more of an internal thing, not necessarily an outreach type of thing. Yeah. Yes. What's your time frame that you allow them? Oh, okay. Awesome. Per an, per announcement or like total? Total. Total. And then plus that's also put onto our website so that anyone that misses church or whatever can actually go and watch the Awesome. Okay. Yes. When Mickey. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Right. Oh, yeah. But is that saying that the bulletin is reaching everybody? No, it's not. And so I think there has to be a transition. It has to be uh, able to reach all ages. And, and uh, so that's probably part of the challenge. Is that people need to stay religious. Absolutely. My church tried to, ooh, I got that. Sorry. Uh, my church tried to make a point on the budget uh, being behind. And so they cut the bulletin down to a half sheet front and back to try to make a. Uh, point to the members to give more and it backfired the members actually liked that thinner bulletin than they liked <laughs> the trifold stuffed bulletin that they would get so I think I think all of these have valid um, uses I think they're all useful and if if your church works with one or the other of them I think you should keep doing it um, our goal is to give you some ideas today to maybe um, find the most effective things um, and that you're not spending your time doing everything. So um, that's kind of the goal that we have in our department. We actually went to our administration and said, hey, we're doing all of this stuff and now we don't have time to do the things that are most effective. So we pared down a lot of things. And so um, we found some new ways to do things that are more effective, more time effective. Um, so that's what um, the, the purpose here is to try to, to take some of these things and maybe condense them into one area. So moving on, oh, did, did you, you have something? Yes, um, one thing about that, that uh, on the TV there, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. um, another thing that a lot of people, um, more and more, especially young people, are switching to is Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. We will be talking about those in depth later. Yes, yeah. definitely. Okay, so um, I didn't hear anybody talk about emails, but um, there is this kind of feel out there that emails are not really being used as much as they used to be. That is not true. It's actually growing how many people send and, and receive emails. Um, and especially if they have some kind of link in them that affect, that sends them to do something. So we want to encourage you, go ahead and click on that. Um, this, even though st this statistic is a little bit old, it is continuing to grow. So make sure that you um, use email effectively. And we'll talk about, a little bit about email uh, newsletters later. Um, in fact, I think it may be... Uh, and also, when you're sending out emails to all your church members, make sure that you blind copy the emails so that you're not sending out everybody's email address to everyone, because some people are very private about that. And not only that, so, when they click reply all accidentally, it yes. doesn't go to everybody, <laughs> which is a big problem. That's a big one. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> okay. but, um, but yeah, no, because emails are a good thing, but mm -hmm. if you have an old computer and you're using, for me, I'm using the latest Windows or something, mm -hmm. when I send it to you, you're not going to see what I'm sending the way it does to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to be cognizant of what are they receiving, are they even going to be able to open it up? Right. Yeah. And so they'll say you never send it to me. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 If it, Sending it through email is tricky because it doesn't always look the same, and, and PDFs can help with that if you just make a PDF of whatever you're making and send it to them in that form. Although there are, and we're going to talk about here, some um, you know ideas for e-newsletters. E-newsletters are definitely the more effective way to go nowadays. Regular newsletters, the older generations do like those, and they are effective. And if you have time, yeah, great, print it out and send it to them. But I would recommend that you look at possibility of going to an e-newsletter if that is something that you do for your church, a, a newsletter type thing. Which, if you do, good on you, because I tell you, newsletters take a lot of work. They're a lot of time, a lot of effort, and I think they're very, very valuable. But um, we feel like that 
Um, you know, kind of doing a hybrid is fine if you feel like that's what your con congregation needs, but definitely look at the e-newsletter because it's much less expensive. It is easy to do nowadays with the MailChimps and the, you know, all these other different options. They're so easy to use and anybody can use them. So go ahead and run through these pretty quickly. When you have a paper newsletter, a lot of times you're just, I don't want to say wasting your time, but you can, you can see the difference here. That's definitely a big difference. All right. So Flocknote is a program that was designed for churches. I'm not sure if any of you guys are using it right now. You guys are? It's great. It does text, call, and email to your church members. So this so is one of those things that we're talking about that kind of combines everything into one place. And you can give access to certain groups depending on the ministries in your church. So the youth director can have their own group within this. The uh, women's ministries director can have their own group within this. Um, so you're able to, to break it down and give people access to only certain things. Uh, the other really nice thing um, about this that even their marketing department will tell you is do not sign up for how many church members you have. Start with the lower package and let the church members subscribe and you'll get billed every time, you know, a little bit more every time a new member subscribes, but that way you're not paying the top price off the, uh, out of the gate, you're starting with the lower price. So that's just a little tip from their sales department actually. <clears throat> um, just to reiterate that, you can send at the same time an email, a phone call, and a text. So you're hitting pretty much everybody in your church with one little bink. And in those emails and texts, you're getting that feedback uh, buttons. You can put in there different forms that you want to um, have people fill out. You get instant feedback from that. They just click a button and it goes right to and them. And nobody else but the person who generated it gets the feedback. So you say, are you going to be at Buffet this week? Yes, no. Uh, are you going to be at this and that seminar? Yes, no. You know, So it, you can see how that can really change how your members interact with you. It's such an easy way to respond in this day. They don't have to remember, I got to call this person back, or I got to email this person back, or I got to get whatever. It's just an instant response. And that's the way our minds think these days, isn't it? And this does eliminate the reply all. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where'd our screen go? Um, and if you're not offering Wi-Fi at your church, we recommend that you do. Um, you can lock it down, and we recommend that you do, <laughs> um, so that your members uh, can interact with you. Um, there is an app out there now called uh, Quizzes. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, Q-U-I-Z-I-Z-Z. -Z -Z. And um, it's basically a way for them to interact with you um, during the service. You can put up um, different things that go along with the service. You can set it up for the kids in your church um, to answer questions about the sermon. Um, you can have polls that people take. So it's kind of an interesting way to get some interaction, but you have to have an internet connection, obviously, to do that. So we recommend that and you it's do. it's free provide that for your church members and definitely lock it down. Have your web person make sure that nobody can access any unsavory websites. We've had churches from our conference where young people have downloaded contraband movies on their Wi-Fi setup and they got charged astronomical amounts of money for those fines. Um, so you just wanna make sure that they can't do anything other than what the, you know, access their Bible app or, or this website, basically. So. Um, Paramount Pictures sent them a fine yep. for downloading, I think it was one of the Star Wars movies off of some contraband website or something, and they got a bill for it. They don't go for the IP address, they go for whoever owns the who, network. The network. So yeah, they did not like that. It was a big bill. <laughs> so definitely a word to the wise. So um, Tammy, you came in just in time to mention some things um, about the second thing that we as communication leaders do in our, in our churches, and that is feeding news and events to the 
local conference, which is um, this young lady right here. So she's going to mention a couple things that she wants you to know about that. So you, if you're not on my database or my mailing list, we should get you on that list. So if you're not getting something from me like every other month saying, hey, communication wants stories, right? Are some people on that list? Do you get that from me? So a few people do. So whenever I need stories, I'm going to ask you for stories. I'm going to tell you what I need, how many photos, how many words, when my deadline is. <clears throat> so you guys are going to get a sneak peek because you came to this. Communique is changing. We're going to do things differently. So we're going to start with this January, February issue. <clears throat> Instead of covering events, we're really trying to focus on the six segments of our mission statement. You can Google it. You can find our mission statement on our website. The first one will be spiritual life, and so we're really focusing on <clears throat> maintaining or focusing really on that exact one. We'll do a different one for each issue, and there's six issues. So we also want to include a theology article on some kind of issue. We're going to include a child section, just maybe a page with something for kiddos to do. Um, and we want to focus more on people who are making a difference in their community. So uh, we've reported on events a lot. <laughs> so we don't necessarily always want to focus on events. We know we're doing events. That's great. We want to promote. We can only kind of promote conference events in Communique. But if you have other events, we can put them in our e-newsletter. And you can get signed up through that for me as well. And you can just see me. I'm here. But we really are looking for features, for different stories, for profiles, for people who are kind of making a difference, for events that are really unusual and different. So I'll be saying more on that in email as well. But thank you. OK. <coughs> Um, so the third component of your job is to feed the same types of news stories, but with a different focus to your local media. Um, how many of you are doing that right now? It's, it's hard. It's hard to do. I mean, it's hard to kind of break into that as a, as a communication leader. Um, so we encourage you to reach out to, I mean, because you basically it's free publicity for whatever you're doing in your church. And most of the time, um, these news reporters want your stories. They want something to put in their newsletters or their newspapers. Um, so, and oftentimes the opinion editor, and which is also the religious editor, is desperately looking for stories exactly. because there are more of political opinions than theological opinions. Unfortunately, how it is. So they are actually desperately looking for your story for the local angle. Right. Click, go ahead and click through these. Um, so what, what we recommend is that you actually contact them first, um, without even necessarily having a story to share, just say, are you okay with me sharing things with you on a, a regular basis? This is the type of things that we do, um, just to kind of get to know them because as soon as, if, if you just come at them all of a sudden with something, then that something might not really fit into what they want. So then they're, that changes the way that their dynamic is that they, they think of your, your, organization. So just go ahead and, and reach out to them. You can just send an email. It's just as simple as that. They have their email addresses on the bottoms of their you know, reports. Um, send them an email saying, I am the communication leader for my church. I would love to send you articles and things every once in a while. Are you open to that? They'll say, absolutely. And then you can start that relationship. So there is uh, just a little encouragement in that, in that regard. Well, and if you have a local school attached to your church, there's a lot of content right there to feed the local papers and the local t stations, especially if you have your kids out in the community doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And we actually just got an email on Thursday from one of our teachers uh, out on the coast, and her kids were featured uh, in the local paper because of an outreach project that they were doing. And she just sent a short email to the opinion editor and said, hey, we're doing this project. My kids have, have raised X number of dollars for this, and they came out and covered, covered it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and another reason is just because y you can actually share Christ through what you're doing just by example. 
just by showing what your church cares about for the community, what you cher- what you cherish in your own congregations, can really make a difference as to how other people see your church, and it can eventually make them interested in coming to that seminar that you're promoting, or that you know revelation thing, or whatever it is that you're having. Um, if they've seen you and what you're doing for the community in their newspaper on a regular basis, they're going to be a whole lot more likely to say, "Oh, that's the church that." does all of that stuff. I don't mind going to that. So it really does kind of break that ground and start people thinking about you and what you're doing. And especially if you're really involved in community service. You guys, if you're doing that, that good for you. And let's make sure everybody knows that you're doing it. Again, a lot of times our churches get a pre- bad press. So we want to make sure that that's, that changes. Um, we definitely have an uphill battle sometimes when it comes to that. We have got to, you know, as Christians, sometimes we have a bad name that we have to overcome. So we want to make sure that we um, change that opinion. Which Georgia Cumberland uh, had to go through back in 2004, 2005 with the plane crash and with the fire at Southern. Uh, it was major stuff. It was being combined into that, oh, this is a group that doesn't pay attention to safety, and that's just not the case. It just happened within four years. Okay, so you guys talked about social media um, earlier. This is a huge co- upcoming part of your of your responsibilities as a communication leader, um, because this is where people are nowadays. Even those people, you know, forty five and above, are all online doing this. Do, 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 do. So um, we want to kind of give you some statistics. I'm really bad with that word, but moving on. <laughs> Um, social media is no longer a luxury. Um, 71% of, of nonprofit communication professionals consider social media one of their most important channels, second only to their website. And if you don't have a website, get a website. Enough said. Just saying. On every And if you don't, if you don't have a website, and you really would like. Have one and one that's really easy to do and really easy to update. Just see it. I want to do that here, but we'll be happy to help you to come up with some ideas on how to. And Tammy um, doesn't have your passwords, just FYI. That's okay. one of the number one calls that we get from local churches when they get a new communication director. <laughs> yeah. Can you give me the password to my website? We don't have it. Yeah. They want to know, um, just quick commercial, sure. they want to know if, if you guys are sharing the slides or not. We can. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, we don't want to just, um, yeah, we don't want to belabor some of these things, but we'll be happy to, you can have as much of this information as you want. We'll give this all to you. Um, so people often visit your church through Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media channel you're on before they even come to your church. I know I've had many, many, many people check into my church and I've never seen them before. So it's very important that you, um, first of all, have a website, but secondly, that you start venturing into social media if you haven't already. Um, And we're going to talk a little bit more about what those look like. Um, Facebook is the king of social media. Now, you know, it's kind of gotten a a little bit of a older face lately. I think a lot of the younger people are moving away from this, but you're not just trying to reach younger people. You want to reach everybody. So, So Facebook is definitely where you need to be. If you don't have a Facebook page, you need to get one and start posting a lot of things that your church is doing and, um, just kind of sharing ideas and getting your church members to interact, encourage people to be a part of that with you. Um, And this is a chart here of the different social media platforms. And as you can see, Facebook blows them all away. Um, They have 2.23 billion subscribers in the B. Um, And then there's YouTube, 
Obviously, YouTube is another great option if you record your sermons or if you record anything in video, definitely have a YouTube channel. But if you are putting it up on YouTube, only put the sermon up because of copyright infringement when it comes yes. to music and stuff. Even when you're streaming, highly recommend do not stream the music part of the service uh, unless you purchase the copyrights for those pieces. CCLI is not a blanket that covers everything out there. So... Good commercial, definitely. Sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> I hate getting calls from lawyers. I just really don't like it. Um, so as you can see, Instagram has about half, a little, actually less than half of what the users are for Facebook. So just to kind of give you that feel of where we are, everybody thinks everybody's on Instagram these days, and there are a lot of people, but more than double are on Facebook. So make sure you start with Facebook and then move down from there. And then... One point I wanted to make, has anybody ever heard of Telegram? I don't even know what that is. Has anybody heard of that? Do you use it? Okay, so it more, it's more an international thing. But my point was that... So kind of like WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Well, my point was that, you know, all the way at the bottom is this little telegram. It has 200 million subscribers. How many of you would like to reach 200 million people? I mean, I'm just saying, even the very, very smallest one on this list, and I know there are like a million more different options that are not on this list. It didn't even make the top, whatever this is, 20. Um, it, there's still a lot of people. So whatever social media platform you're comfortable with, do it, because you're going to reach somebody with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do it all. Do it all. Do it all. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Just do it all. And I'm preaching to myself too because I'm not an Instagram-y person. Like, does She's anybody not. really want to see all of my photos? I don't really think so. But. You know, when it comes to work and, and trying to do outreach, I definitely um, feel like that's that's the way to go. Um, speaking of Twitter and Instagram, again, only about 15% of our churches that's um, in the Protestant denominations are using Twitter and Instagram, but definitely you're going to want to reach that um, 800 million users from Instagram and 330 million from, and actually that is old that's from yeah. 2017. The other one was more current. So it's more like a billion from Instagram. Um, does anybody blog or, vl or vlog from your church? Anybody? Um, blogging is kind of a hybrid from, I mean, it, it can take the place of a newsletter. If you don't feel like you want to take the time to do the layout and the, all of the, you know, adding the recipes in there and the, the calendar and all that, you can just decide to do a blog where you just feed news into it. And people subscribe to it, and then they get that information as it comes. So you can send one thing at a time. Do, do, do. You know, they get it. They read it. They might be more likely to read it than well, if they it, get a whole newsletter. It also is more current because as that story is happening, you're posting that story, and it's going immediately to their email. So there's not that delay in, in information as well. Um, the, the other thing that we wanted to point out with this slide is that if you have social media and you don't post on it, there's really no point in having it. <laughs> the bare really... minimum is one post a day. Yeah. I think, I think if that seems a little intimidating to you, don't get intimidated. One post a day does not mean that you have to be posting one time a day. So you can have a team of people that you trust um, and or what the newest thing is, is um, doing the, what do they call it? They call it takeovers. Takeovers, where you give your um, access to your Instagram or your Facebook for a day to say a couple of your youth or young adults and they are going to some youth event or something and then they can do social media posts all day while they're there and then you just take that that 
um, access back from them at the end of the day. So obviously then you'd have to trust them not to put anything bad on there, but um, it's something that you can share that love, share the responsibilities, Facebook and Instagram, and all of them have that ability to have more than one user. So you can have help with that. And pretty much everybody over the age of, or under the age of 40 in your church is going to know how to do all that stuff, or maybe even now it's 50 or 60, actually. <laughs> Did somebody have a question? It's just helps to know. Facebook, like on a fan page, mm -hmm. in, in a Facebook group, you're writing on a Facebook group, you can schedule something to automatically post that. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to talk about some tools that we found for that later. But yes, that is very good information. Well, and on your uh, fan page for your church or your school or whatever, you actually can assign roles and those roles have certain restrictions as mm -hmm. to what they can do. So you don't have to give everybody administration privileges to your, to your social media accounts. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about video later, but we definitely wanna touch on that now. Um, it is uh, becoming more and more evident that young people respond better to video. So if you're especially wanting to reach out to a younger demographic in your church and reach those young people that have moved away or are sort of just there, um, you want to try to get engaged with video. And you know what? They can do it. You can have them do it. So if you want to start something like that, um, ask them if they want to be involved in it. And they can start doing some small videos and posting things that they do as their youth group, they, you know, or whatever it is that's going on. Get them involved in that. Um, but definitely, if you have an upcoming event or something that's happening, do a short video. Get your pastor in, in front of a cool background and have him dynamically say what's going on in the church and just post it on your social media. People will watch it, especially if it's like one to two minutes and it's not super long. You definitely can use that as a tool. It's so simple. Every phone, every tablet, every computer has video editing software. Don't even edit it if you don't feel like it. Just make them do it 500 times until you get it the way you want it, and then or post do it. it. Live. Or five. It depends live. on how good they are at it. <laughs> yes, sir. We have not, uh, you know, we've delved in more of the permissions side of things, like if they um, are a minor, then they need to have permission to be, you know, seen on a promotional type video for your church, then you would definitely need to get a waiver signed. But we've not really had any issues yet, hopefully, knock on wood, with any, um, you know, kind of stalking situations or anything like that um, with church websites. Um, I think that is definitely an issue um, that we'll be looking at in the future, but I haven't had any experience with that yet. Do you have anything to add? No. Um, there, We were asked by a couple of our churches for a statement for them to put in their bulletin when they were live streaming to let people know that you could be on camera, and if you don't want to be on camera, where to sit in the, in the church. Um, so that if that helps you. Um, but, you know, like, like Becky was saying, getting youth and kids involved is also part of retention in our church. Mm -hmm. And there's, the new statistic is that children have already decided by age 11 whether they're going to stay after high school in the church or leave. So getting youth and, and kids involved is part of the retention. Don't wait until they're responsible enough to handle something. Start training them a lot younger, bringing them in. You know, for me, uh, our church communication director at College Dale knew that I loved photography, and so she had me doing baptistry uh, photos for her. Every time there was a baptism, I was in the tank with with them getting photos, and it was a way of getting me interacting with the church. I got pulled up into the sound booth. Um, so, you know, at a very young age, and so it wasn't just um, waiting until I got to college or waiting until I got to being 18 to get involved. So, anyway, that's my little... Yes, sir. I just want to comment on that. I mean, I, I think that's very good news. I just want to... Mm -hmm. Because I, I do like involving young people. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, I don't think there's any legal ramifications if you get a waiver signed if they're under 18. Um, as far as, you know, there's always going to be crazy people out there. And just like we do in our churches, we have to be careful um, about what we what we put out there. But I haven't had any experience. Have you, Tammy, about any issues with putting young people on our... Now, we're talking about on our, on our church pages, so I, I haven't really seen anything like that yet. Hopefully. Well, you can give them editor privileges or contributor privileges, and then those privileges have to get approved by the administrator. So you can hold the administrative power on that, and they can upload something, and you'll get a notice, notification that you need to check it, and then you can approve or deny it, and that's when it goes live. On that same vein, and I don't know how many of you know this, but um, you can block certain words that are posted mm -hmm. on your social media pages. So if, for instance, um, you do have something happen in your church that you really don't want being discussed on social media, you can go in and say those keywords in your Facebook security profile, and it will block anybody from being able to post those any posts with those words in it. So that can help you um, when you set up your Facebook pages to have more of a, f a sense of security that you're not going to be just throwing it open for everybody to make comments about your church and how horrific it is. I'm sure it's not horrific, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Did you have a question? They have to know. Yeah, if you regularly stream your services, then you need to let them know that that's going to happen. And then if they don't want to be on video for whatever reason, they just don't participate in that. Um, and there is another option for those who are coming into your your congregation, if you do regularly pan the audience, not most people don't do that, but if you do, you might have an overflow room with a video feed in it that, that people can go into if they want to. So we have some of our churches that post that. When they come in the door, it says our services are being live streamed. If you are not comfortable with that, there is a room down the hall to the right that you can enjoy our service without having to be on camera. So that's an option. Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah. A release form. A release form. We do have uh, on our website, on the Carolina Conference website, and so does Tammy, a release form for, mm -hmm. for anybody that's going to be on, on camera at a church. Yeah. Yes, Rachel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I personally have an experience at even with the church, but my church at school, there's been issues in the past with like potentially dangerous family mm -hmm. members and the way it has specifically said, make sure that no pictures are taken of my kid and posted mm -hmm. anywhere. And so just make sure that like you're transparent about that and you know where that information is. And so yeah. just in case there is an issue and they don't want to know who say whether or not they don't want to see it. Well, and also with your schools, there is a release form that is in the um, paperwork with your schools. So if you hadn't, we're thinking down that line as well. But okay. All right. So this is the fifth and last uh, part of this section of our um, workshop. 
and that is um, to find creative ways to communicate with and connect with your members. It kind of goes along with what we talked in number one, but we're going to kind of plus it here. Um, we're going to try to share with you some of the things that we have found that have um, made our job easier. We like that, don't we? Easier and more effective. So that's also uh, the goal that we have uh, as communicators is to be more effective and to do it as little time as possible, right? <laughs> All right. Um, the average attention span of a human being is shorter than that of a goldfish, r roughly eight seconds. That's really sad, isn't it? I mean, we were like, boop, boop, popcorn from one thing to the next all the time. I mean, literally most people, quiet time during the day is only when you're sleeping. Isn't that true? Unfortunately. We either have our radios on or we have our TVs on or we're looking at our phones, or we're driving with the radio on, or we're talking to somebody. Right? <laughs> there is no time when your brain is not being attacked by some kind of information. Let's just let that soak in for a second. Should we have a quiet moment? <laughs> um, so, so when you think about it, it's pretty... Um, you can understand why our attention spans are so short. It's because we're doing this all day. Do, 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 do. Grant? Yes, um, Grant. Just, just to give some perspective for that whole eight second thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's also the, the quality of content that is being viewed. Mm -hmm. um, because now, with the emergence of podcasts, there are some crazy podcasts, like Joe Rogan podcast, George Clooney mm -hmm. podcast, where he has a three hour podcast, mm -hmm. or an hour and a half podcast. Mm -hmm. not fluffy mm -hmm. things. And there are some of the most popular podcasts out there. Mm -hmm. So there is that when I'm scrolling through Instagram, I do have the attention span of mm -hmm. a goldfish. Like I'm not going to look at this picture very long. But we have also discovered, and this is just within the last five years, that people will listen to good content mm -hmm. for a very long time. I mean, Joe Rogan's interview, he's, the, he's probably oh, the yeah. most influential person in the world right now as far as followers who follow him and his interviews are mm -hmm. a regular three hour long. So he would like die of a passion that I'm gonna preach for three hours today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so like a, as we're thinking about catching attention, yeah, it is really quick. Mm -hmm. But as we're thinking about producing content, if it's really good, mm -hmm. there are people oh, yeah. there who can go. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they'll, they'll stick. Right. Well. Longer than eight seconds of Oh yeah, true. But and this, this is, is also for getting their capturing attention. their attention. Capturing yes, their attention. and that's that is absolutely true. And we're going to get it get into that as well. Um, but trying to be the one that the the Joe Rogan trying to be that one is really hard to get them to stop. And so that's the challenge: is trying to capture them within that eight seconds to get them to stay longer. Um, so and sometimes, if they know the topic, some one thing to get their attention is to tell them what you're not going to talk about. So set out a list of things like you're not going to hear me talk about this, 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 and this. And they're like, "Wait, but I thought you were going to talk about this because they've already predicted your conversation." So. Changing that up and pulling that rug out from under them makes them sit down and listen. And then they will ask for more questions. That's the thing, is if, if you can capture them enough, then they will come back for more. They will want more, they will ask more, they will keep going. You can add, always add more, but you can't take it out. So if you sit there and you're like, wah, 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 like the little teacher on, on the, what is it, the peanuts? peanuts. Yeah, it's Charlie Brown. Um, you're gonna lose them immediately. They'll never come back. They will never come back. That's the thing. It's not just about getting them the one time. It's about you got one chance at this apple. You got to make them want to come back again and see what you have to offer. And that is so scary and so tricky. So plan. <laughs> plan ahead. Make sure you know what you're talking about, what you're doing, because you got one chance to catch them. And also, um, and I just, I'm going to go back on what I just said, but if you don't catch them the first time, try, try again. Is that what is, if you don't first, so you don't succeed, try, try again. It does t sometimes take up to seven times to catch somebody's attention. So 
keep trying, keep doing it, but you really, really need to make your content stand out from the very beginning. And there is exactly what I'm talking about. Make your content engaging and bright and easy to understand. We don't want anything complicated at the first. So we are gonna talk about some of the things that we have done to kind of up our game from the conference level. Now, some of these may be out of your reach, but we're trying to think of things that are um, affordable, easy to do, things that you don't have to be a professional to do, and starting with Subsplash. So Subsplash, I'm gonna cover a little bit later on in the text uh, part of it, but this is what we use for our conference app. Not only do they do app, they do website. Um, they will take your content and upload it to Roku um, and to all the podcast forums as well. So it's kind of a one-stop shop app. And The only downside to Subsplash is it can be a little pricey to start with. Um, and I'm sure you'll be sharing about that later, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we did mention blogs as an, op as an option for newsletters because, again, they can subscribe to it, and then it's an immediate thing that goes in their inbox. Another thing would be make sure that you get like an e-calendar. Um, do that through Google, and they, your church members can actually subscribe to that calendar. So every time something's added to the church calendar or the school's calendar or whatever, those that have subscribed to it can get that update immediately and they know what's going on. And there's no, there's no excuse on their end for saying, I didn't know that was happening, which we get a lot. <laughs> so Fiverr, have you guys ever used Fiverr? Fiverr's great if there are things that you're not as skilled at, but you need help, and everything starts at $5. It goes up from there depending on what it is that you're asking for. Uh, we had a coworker who's working on a podcast right now wanted their own theme song, so they reached out to a songwriter on Fiverr and got a theme song for their podcast. I mean, who doesn't want their own theme song, right? Right. <laughs> I want that plane as I walk in the door. That's right. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> sure. Fiverr, it, um, there are graphic designers, there are writers, there are musicians, there are, yeah, right at the top of, of the page there. Um, there's all these different categories that you can search for what you're needing done. So if you need um, a... Uh, video graphic at the beginning of your videos, like an animated graphic, you can reach out to them and somebody can construct an animated graphic for you at the beginning of your video. So um, basically, if I, I, as a graphic designer, want to make a little side hustle, I can sign up for this and I can say, for $5, I'll design you a basic logo. And and somebody contacts me and I tell, tells me what they want, I design it for them and send it to them. So it's people out there who do good things, connecting with people who need good things and doing it pretty cheap. I mean, the prices do go up depending on what you want, but um, it's a pretty inexpensive way to get some of these things that are a little elusive for those of us who are not video people adapt. or, uh, yeah. There you go, yeah. as adapt, Ad adapt. At certain types of creativity. All right, Skillshare. Have any of you guys used Skillshare before? It's kind of like Lynda.com. Are you guys familiar with Lynda.com, where there's tutorials? Skillshare has thousands of tutorials on literally hundreds and hundreds of topics. It's amazing. So it's basically like what we're doing over and over for all different topics. So if, if you need to know about anything that has to do with business or social media or, um, help me out, uh, they do a lot of different things. Creativity, how to, how to design, how to, how to draw. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a hundred different things. They even have pottery on there if you want to learn how to, you know, be a yeah. potter. Yeah, so we actually have a two-month free premium uh, membership QR code over here if you guys want access to this. We've actually signed up for Skillshare for our office and it's like 99 bucks for the year which is one, a really great deal um, in my opinion. 100 bucks it's and we can go on and it's unlimited. You aren't uh, throttled down based on what you how much you use it or how little you use it. 
lynda.com. L Y N D A. It's that's more like for software, how to yeah. learn how to use different kinds of software. And they have that same software stuff on here, plus hundreds of other yeah. things. This is <laughs> this is a. It has a bigger um, tutorial uh, base. Yeah. Did you have a question? Okay. All right. So we went online and did some investigating for you guys. Um, how many of you, maybe I shouldn't ask for a, a <laughs> for you to raise your hands, but I know some of you have done this, gone on Google and looked for an image and downloaded it and used it in something without asking permission. It happens a lot. <laughs> we have a support group for that. <laughs> we actually see it in a lot of PowerPoints from our pastors in their churches. It's so easy, right? They're just right there for the taking. Yeah. You just click right and save that. I especially as. love when there's a watermark across it. You know, yeah. <laughs> You're sitting there photoshopping for two hours oh. trying to get the watermark off so you can use it. Yes. Yeah, so we have that, uh, we've had that question a lot. So don't do that. Just in case I wasn't really clear, don't do that. It's it's illegal, and we yeah. have had um, another another one of our churches had that happen, and they got a bill from Getty Images for eight hundred dollars for using one of those images um, because they have these little thing called bots now that do -do 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 out into all of our computers and find the hidden keys that they have put into those images and they will find you and they will prosecute you so just don't do it it's not a good idea well, it's not worth it and they might not come after the local church they'll come after the conference office whoever has the bigger purse yep is who they contact um yeah we had one back in back in the day with uh uh copyright or royalty free images when we, you would purchase it you had to purchase it for a certain length of time so you either purchased it for unlimited use or a limited use and the limited was specific and we actually right after we started working together got, got contacted now let me explain how deep this use. will go too because this image was embedded in a pdf that was a downloadable option on our website that was also three years it old. wasn't even on the website it was in a pdf that was on the website so it's not just, oh, here's our big cover image on the front of our website. It's like they really can dig down and find whatever it is that you've, you've snarfed off the website. And if you were live streaming you like in that your word, church, didn't you, Jay? there are actually <laughs> third-party companies that their job is, they're assigned, there's some third parties assigned to YouTube, there are some that are assigned to Facebook, and if you are live streaming, there are people watching it to watch for copyright infringement. Yes, and it's so yeah creepy. that's so they will they'll see that either in the powerpoint or if you're streaming music and you'll get contacted by a lawyer fairly quickly all right so you should all have had time to take a picture of this slide if you haven't do it because these are all free free photography free photography free photos free presentations free vectors free videos free videos and after effects and free vector illustrations. So now there are paid options on these that you know they have pricing tiers, but their basic is free. We like that word, free. Yes, sir. We will make this available. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Grant. A vector is a graphic that is um, scalable to any size without losing quality. So it's a mathematical equation instead of a pixelated photo. It doesn't have pixels, it has math. So those which are is beyond my Those are the type of graphics that we would use for like billboards. Yeah. Because we can Most most of the time sense. graphics do not look like photos. I mean, yeah. sometimes they can make them look photorealistic, but they they're usually like a logo or a, a drawing or something like that. But they are very handy, especially if you want to take something and then manipulate it and make it your own. So if you go on download a vector, you can open it in a Corel Draw or a Illustrator or I can't remember what some of the free or less expensive programs that open vectors. But um, you can then remove elements from it, change things around very easily. It's not like a picture where you have to Photoshop everything and make it, you know, 
look the way you want it to. All right, moving on. This right. is also photos and video editing. You don't just have to have Adobe Creative Cloud. Your best editing software is the one that you know how to use and the one that comes free on your computer. Yes, so these are different options online um, that you can use to do your photo and video editing. Um, I can't see your head is in the way. <laughs> I could turn around, but I'd rather tell you to move. Um, <laughs> just teasing. Um, let's see, Filmora is a really good one. Um, also, Adobe Premiere Elements, you can get those on your, on your tablets or, or your um, phones. Um, so those are, are really basic, but they're easy to use. So that's what we're kind of aiming for here. If you have the budget and you want to learn something more intense, um, we use um, Adobe Premiere in our office. It's, it's kind of expensive, though, so it may not be something you'd want to go with right off the bat. And a note, Courtney, you want to mention oh, yeah. this? So we get contacted by our churches asking for DVDs of whatever videos that we produce. The industry has taken away the ability to create DVD menus in burning your discs to be able to play on a DVD player. We don't even have DVD drives anymore. In our computers, we don't, because the industry is going to the streaming platforms. And so that capability is, is going away. And uh, we used to duplicate every event that we recorded sell the DVDs, and then the sale of the DVDs started going down. So then we just started making them available on YouTube and Vimeo, and the viewership went up. And it didn't just go up in our conference, it went up around the world. So we can actually see in the analytics people watching in uh, Asia and in Europe and in the Oceanic, so Australia. Um, so Everywhere it, it but Antarctica. Our, yeah. <laughs> We're working on that. We're working on that. Just a question. Uh, there is a, a demographic that is not on the internet. Mm -hmm. They're not into pictures. They're still asking for the DVDs. Mm -hmm. So can you go to the DVD drives off of Vimeo or YouTube? Or? You can download the video off of there and put it on like a thumb drive and take it into church if, if it can uh, be played off of a computer in, in the system. Um, but And you can we don't, purchase we don't have um, a DVD... Drive. drive separate from your computer and make a DVD if you want to. But it's just not easy to do anymore. They don't mm -hmm. make the software that makes it. I mean, they do, but it's it's kind of phasing out. Mm -hmm. um, and there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, oh, yes. Almost all of these programs have easy uploads to these social media platforms. You just click a button for whatever format you want to send it to, and if you put in your username and password, usually it'll just directly send it there. So it makes it really, really, really easy to um, create the videos and then send them to Facebook, <laughs> I'm syncing, and Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, this is uh, a group of graphic programs made just for social media. So those memes that you see out there and those happy Sabbath quotes and all of those things, you can make those through these different options. And the top one there, canva.com, is also a really good way to make any flyers or newsletters or any kind of graphic design stuff that you want to make. They have tons and tons of templates that you can use, and it just takes the guesswork out of what looks good and what doesn't. Because we all know that flyers can look really bad or really good. So um, well, that's an option. The bottom three are actually where you can have all of your social media logged in and you can update everything in one place. Yes. So even though they are all connected, this even makes it easier because you are tied on Twitter at least to how many characters you can put in. So you can you can work that around with that. And that goes along with what you were saying about <laughs> scheduling your social media mm -hmm. posts. You can schedule them through here. And there was another one that we were going to sign up for, and I forgot to put it on here. Do you remember what it was called? Yeah, hold on a second. Um, he'll find that. But um, you can schedule things um, to post a week ahead. You just put them all in, 
and say, I want them to post this, this, and this. And there are specific times of the day that are better to post than others. Mm -hmm. um, evenings are the best. Um, I'm not really up on all the different um, post times. Planner. Yes, postplanner.com. That also has a free option, by the way. Mm -hmm. Or I think it might be like a $5 a month or something. I mean, it's, it's fairly really inexpensive. inexpensive. And Post Planner, you can also set stuff to repost. So if it's something that you want to bring people's attention back to, you can set it up to uh, schedule to a repost. This is her brother, by yes. the way, just so you know. Canva. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really great what you mentioned for a campaign. Like if you're doing a whole campaign of a Facebook, um, all print options, banners, et cetera, et cetera, you, you can do it all at the same time in, mm -hmm. in Canva. So you use that same graphic on multiple different things. It's a really useful tool. Um, another thing I wanted to mention about what Courtney said about reposting on Post Planner, and I'm sure you can do this with the, some of the other ones too. Um, what they recommend is that you set up your post to go every year, the same post. Like if it's a Happy Sabbath quote, if it posts once a year, your people are not going to remember that it was the same one they saw last year. Mm -hmm. So you can take some of that posting every day and make it automated so that it's super duper easy to keep that up. And it won't have the previous year's date on it. Like when right. Facebook does that reminder and people repost from the reminder, I'm guilty of that. Um, it, will it won't have that date. So yeah. again, they won't notice. Any other comments, questions about this before we move on? Okay. Do we need to stand up, stretch our legs, go to the bathroom? Okay. <laughs> Anybody want a break? We'll take five minutes five and then minutes? we'll come back, okay? okay.